Is this thing on? All right, thank you. Um, I apologize for the little change right there. I had to just change a little something in my slides. There's a show I was looking forward to discussing with all of you today, and I had the first episode all teed up and ready to show. It launched today on Yahoo. However, our press release is delayed due to a variety of partners that we're working with. And I just got the text saying that I can't show it and I can't talk about it. So uh, <laughs> that's now reflected in my slides. But uh, thank you all for coming out. It's really nice to see all of you. Uh, a little bit about myself. I oversee branded entertainment programming for Yahoo. Brief into my background, just give a little perspective of where I'm coming from. I, uh, <clears throat> I started off doing creative uh, development and programming in the traditional studio system for film, network system for TV. And it was about eight years ago that I made the shift out of traditional film and TV into the digital space. I started off working for CBS Interactive, then went over to Paramount Digital, over to Endemol, across all of those companies focusing on original programming and extension programming of our existing IP, all the way over to Yahoo about a few years ago, where uh, I was overseeing development of our original programming. And most recently, I moved off of the originals team to focus on running our branded entertainment programming at Yahoo. So just a little bit about how we're programming at Yahoo. I think this might give a pretty good high-level perspective. And ultimately, that's really what I want to leave you with today, just a high-level perspective that when we dive into some of the Q&A, we could get a bit more granular. I expect that most, if not all of you here, are in the content creation business. If you're not content creators, you work very closely with content creators. Maybe you're selling content. So I thought coming at it from that perspective of really trying to explain how we're approaching content creation at Yahoo, specifically around brands and entertainment, where those opportunities exist, so that afterwards you have a much better sense of how we might be able to partner up on anything that you're working on. And if not me, then maybe you'll have a better sense of uh, how your programs or projects could align with some of the other publishers and platforms out there. because. Uh, what I'm about to talk about isn't that dramatically different from uh, how a lot of other companies are handling things. So just first at a high level, programming at Yahoo could really be bucketed in four key silos, the first one being our studios programming. This aligns most with how we have traditionally programmed at Yahoo for over a decade, which is creating programming through a vertically integrated system where we develop in-house, we produce in-house through our studio, and we distribute on Yahoo that align with our existing owned and operated properties, like Yahoo News, Yahoo Sports, Yahoo Finance. There's about a dozen major properties on Yahoo that hold leadership position in their content category. And what we started doing a couple of years ago was partnering up with established marquee editors and chiefs to run those content properties for us. So we partnered up with Katie Couric to run Yahoo News. Uh, Joe Z, former editor-in-chief of L, to run Yahoo Fashion, Bobby Brown to run Yahoo Beauty, uh, and so forth, across many different pro uh, content categories, properties. And um, the way that we're approaching programming there is essentially that each of those editors has a budget, and they can make a handful of shows each year that satisfy that existing audience and allow that audience to really dive deeper and more immersively into those programming uh, owned and operated verticals. <laughs> There isn't that much opportunity to partner with outside companies on that, but thought it would be helpful for you to know, since that's very much the underlying foundational way that Yahoo has been programming content and how a lot of the major publishers do approach content. The original side is an exciting part of our business that we started about four years ago, recognizing, just like a lot of other big publishers and networks out there, that there's a huge opportunity to build audience around premium original programming that's unique and exclusive to your network. So uh, that's right when I joined Yahoo, right when we were building out that, uh, that part of our business. And on the original side, we started off doing short form programming, moved all the way into doing half hour scripted, which is what we launched this year. Three big half hour scripted shows, uh, season seven of Community being one of them, a show with Paul Feig that he created being the other, and a show set in the world of basketball being the third one there. And we're right now evaluating the performance and overall metrics around these shows to figure out what 2016 is going to look like on the original side. But the big thing to keep in mind on the original side of the big business is the goal 
of essentially originals is our way of bringing new audience to our network. On the studio side, we could create programming that satisfies and helps build existing audience around properties, but originals is how do we get new people to come to the network. And I'm glad you mentioned Burning Love because that was a really interesting example of a show that really that did that. It was one of the first big originals we did, and um, the, one of the first stats to come out of Burning Love, the month that we launched it, was that the first month Burning Love came out, the number one search term, bringing traffic to Yahoo, meaning you know, you're typing it into Google or Bing or whatever, the number one search term, bringing new traffic to Yahoo. Keeping in mind that Yahoo has about a billion worldwide users spread across all these content properties. We're the biggest publisher on the web. The number one search term was Burning Love. So with that said, it's like, wow, this one show could really bring new audience to the network, which is exciting. Uh, the third is the live bucket, which is through a partnership that we're doing with Live Nation, streaming a new concert every day for the entire year, 365 concerts, spreading out into entertainment coverage, red carpet, as well as sports. Then finally, branded entertainment, which I'll dive into much more deeply, which is our way of creating content that first and foremost is good for our network, is good for our audience, expresses the Yahoo voice in a meaningful and positive way, but also expresses our brand partner's voice in a meaningful and a positive way, and allows our brand partners to express the overall themes and brand sensibilities and even a key, key features along a product line within programming in such a way that that messaging is naturally, organically woven into the storytelling. So just a couple things at a very high level about our branded entertainment business. The first thing that got me really excited about moving away from originals into branded was recognizing the rapid speed with which this business was growing, which makes sense with a very fundamental principle of that our media business is overwhelmingly largely an advertiser supported business. Yes, there are many examples of subscription networks that have made it work for them, but traditionally, historically, and for quite a while, this will be overwhelmingly an ad-supported business. And what we found when sitting down with our key sales leads across every ad sales category, we've got about 600 sales leads at Yahoo that cover just about every brand that buys an ad on the internet. And what we found overwhelmingly is that brands who are looking to buy ad-supported video are more and more asking to create custom programming. And that is really reflected in just a few key, very simple key stats that this year we're seeing over $4 billion spent in native advertising. And native advertising is basically content that is created in partnership with a brand. It's meant to function and serve as content, but there is a brand voice woven into there somewhere. And, uh, and we're seeing examples of native content, I mean, working all the way into the New York Times and Time Inc. It's, it, it, it's a big part of our uh, editorial uh, industry at the moment. And then on the video side, we're seeing like, close to $8 billion being spent on video ads. And it's in between this, these two pieces, the native piece and the digital video piece, where that branded entertainment sphere really exists. And we're seeing an increase, 34% over last year, which is really exciting. But it's that when we speak with like, overwhelmingly with the advertising community, it's very clear that previously what was buying a pre-roll before a show, buying a sponsorship of an existing show, where you're basically weaving your product or message into an existing show, is becoming of much less interest when compared to the brand having an opportunity to create a program with the publisher from scratch which is ultimately how we bring these programs to market, which I think is where things should really start to get interesting. Hopefully it's been a little interesting until this point. But that uh, there, there's a few key ways that we're focused on bringing programming to market. And this focuses at a very high level of how we're positioning these opportunities to our brand partners. I'll explain it briefly to give you that broader perspective of how it works. Ultimately, when we launch a branded program on Yahoo, and this is standard across a lot of publishers, is that what we're selling, we're not selling a show to a sponsor. We're selling media to a sponsor. They're committing to buying advertising on Yahoo's network. And in turn, once Yahoo has secured that advertising, Yahoo will then finance the program, which very literally comes out of Yahoo's profit on the media sale. So it's not like 
if we sell a million dollar package to Ford, Ford is receiving $1 million worth of guaranteed media to run on Yahoo, some of which will support the show that we're creating, and some of which will drive back to Ford.com or whatever it may be, whatever their goals are. And that million dollars that Ford's spending goes into a very specific media plan broken out with every ad unit showing $1 million of guaranteed value that Ford is receiving for every penny that they spend. The cost of the show, let's say it costs a quarter million, that's a cost that Yahoo is just paying for as a studio. So that keeps it very simple in breaking out how the pieces all come together and that you've got the brand, you've got the studio, in this case it's a studio slash network, and you've got the production company. And in building that out, getting these shows out in market, there's a couple of ways that we approach it. The first one is looking at the reactive side of our business, which is traditionally how this has been run. Um, for the past few years, the overwhelming lion's share of opportunity in the brand and entertainment space has been sold through on a reactive basis. Brands, agencies reaching out to publishers like Yahoo and saying, hey, this is what's on our roadmap for Q4. We're looking to launch a campaign around this product, want to build awareness in the following ways, express the following themes and sensibilities. What custom idea do you have that could align with that? Something that feels like a show, but also says what we want to say. And the challenge with approaching business that way is that, you know, especially at Yahoo, as, as large as we are, there's an overwhelming flood of these requests constantly flowing through. And to respond to them in a meaningful way is challenging when you're really whipping up an idea in just a couple of days. So to increase the velocity of how we could respond to these requests, as well as increase the quality of programming that we're putting out in market, we put together over the last year a series of, you could almost look at them as slates, uh, programming slates, that as new opportunities come in, new requests come in, we're able to pull an idea off the shelf that's fully baked, fully packaged, established with a partner that we're interested in working with, a uh, production partner, to be clear, and with really just a small minor tweak, we could customize that program so that the brand feels like it's a unique, customized thing for them. And that's gone a really long way. So just a couple examples of shows that we've done. We did this one thing with Farmers Insurance um, that was called um, Bridging the Gaps, which was Farmers Insurance came out saying, this is very reactive. They're telling us we want to do something around highlighting gaps in, in people's insurance coverage, focusing on different life stages. And so we came up with an idea on a Tuesday afternoon that said, okay, well, what if we focus on different life stages like buying a car, getting married, having a baby, buying a house, and a few others, and creating these uh, scripted comedic vignettes around you know, how, how funny those moments could be. And we were able to sell that one through. When we attached the production company, it was very much a standard work for hire in that we came up with a reactive idea, brought in a company that's very established in television to do scripted comedy that we thought was right for it. On the other side, it actually happened to be the same production company there's an idea that they brought us that was all about creating adventure for taking people on these really unique uh, and exciting adventures. And um, we got this opportunity came in through Kia where they were asking for ideas around you know, the, the new Kia Sorento helping uh, create opportunity around driving adventure for, you know, for uh, their customer base. So we thought, okay, we've got this idea that's fully packaged, it's fully developed. There's a way to very easily tweak and customize this for Kia, and Kia loved it. And so that's a show that worked out really well. And then the one I'm not allowed to talk about right now, which I'm bummed, this is a really cool one. But this is one that was actually a proactive program, where uh, now that I can't mention any specifics, I'll say that a, a, a major digital studio came in with a program that had a major A-list producer slash talent attached to it. Uh, the talent had a first look deal on the, with the studio. So we knew in this case it would be structured in, in sort of a funny way where you would have the brand, you would have Yahoo as the network, you would have the studio as the studio, and you would have the production company as the production company. So normally there's only a couple partners. This one added a few others, which complicated it a bit, which is why the press release still hasn't gone out today, even though the show launched. But, uh, and so with that one coming together, it was a really exciting idea with huge talent already attached to it, with a big studio, and we said if we can't sell this to a big sponsor in a specific category, there's something wrong with this business. So we, uh, we called up a few key brands in this particular category, and it really just took a couple of meetings and a couple of weeks before we sold this one through at a really high level, 
And um, we've been in production over the last couple of months. The show launched today. If you go to Yahoo, you could check it out. Otherwise, look out for the press release. Um, this is where the episode would have played, but we're just going to move on to a few key categories. So the key categories that we're um, really focusing on, this always comes up in any of these meetings, is like, well, who are the key buyers? And we really find that the overwhelming lion's share of spend is happening across the autos category, retail CPG, QSR, finance, and tech telco. I think one thing that all five of these categories really have in common is that Lifestyle programming is what's really driving the overwhelming lion's share of business that's being done. In auto specifically, it's, it's, it, this is more just to help frame a little perspective for the types of, if you've got ideas that you think might align, it's, I get a lot of pitches around like auto-centric programming and how it's, it's, it's about cars in a specific way. But the problem is with those types of ideas is that overwhelmingly, almost all the time, the, the auto brands are really interested in creating lifestyle programming that is able to weave in and feature a vehicle around an aspirational lifestyle thing, whether it happens to be a music program, a tech program, a sports program, whatever it may be. Um, it's not really about cars, but a car could be a, a character within the story. Uh, with retail CPG, I mean, beauty, fashion, huge within those categories. You could really think of it as like anything that you would buy at a Walmart including Walmart, we'd really find within those categories. Um, QSR, getting back into the autos thing, it's those ideas that are really like about food, never sell to food brands. It's the ideas about lifestyle that happen to be able to weave food in in an interesting way are always the ones that we're able to push forth. It's, it's really hard to figure out how to do a food show um, for you know Burger King uh, when their, their key focus is really about, well, how are we showcasing the Whopper? So, uh, and just dealing with the category exclusivities that come with featuring competing products, it, it makes it very challenging for those types of, of programming ideas. Uh, finance, again, lifestyle in a really big way. Um, short form programming being huge within the finance category. And finance is incredibly broad in that it could encapsulate anyone from a Chase bank to a Visa through a farmer's insurance. And somehow we managed to sell through a scripted comedy uh, within that category, which I found really exciting because above all else, what that told me is that we're now witnessing the beginning of true entertainment working its way into this. As, as this started out quite a few years ago, it was really focusing on the you know, how-to videos and like very specific short-form lifestyle content. That's, that's very product-driven, but when you get into something like a short-form scripted comedy, now you're getting into a space where, okay, we're, we're really focused on building audience, making, entertaining people, uh, which is a very exciting shift in, in the space. And across tech, telco, very similar thing. We're overall across the board, what I would say is that short-form programming is what's really selling under 10-minute episodes. But what I really love about this space, um, even as I would compare it to the original's business, is that... There's very few limitations around the format constraints that we have to play within in the branded space. It's, it's, it's really allowing us to tell stories that are driven by the best manifestation of the story. If the story makes the most sense in 30 second snippets, that's what we'll probably do. If it makes the most sense as 10 minute episodes, well then we could do that and everything in between is fair game. And it's really wonderful to be playing in a space creatively where it's the creative that's dictating the format and not the other way around. Uh, so a couple key things to just keep in mind is that first and foremost, it's, it, it, the brand really is a partner in this programming. It's, it's really challenging to manage everyone's expectations, especially when you're working with a big studio or you're working with big talent. And, they're excited about this opportunity to sell the show through, and it's like, great, we're making the show. We could weave this product in in a simple way when the brand's asks might be a little bit more than just weaving it in in a very subtle way. They want it to be a bit more overt, and it's recognizing that like, it's a partnership, and everybody needs to recognize that like, we all need to figure out how to make this thing work. And the challenge is that there's no clear template for how every one of these programs is supposed to be run. Every brand's mandate is different. All of their key pillars and sensibilities are dramatically different across the board, even within the same categories. And through that, we're really seeing that it's, it, it's just very hard to manage expectations early in the process, but everything that could be done every step of the way 
is, is dramatically important as early as possible of really ensuring that the production partners, the network, and the brand are all completely in line about what can and can't be done. Because with every single one of these, you're figuring it out for the first time together going into that first episode. And as the volume is so high, it's, it's always a pretty big challenge. But then finally, this, this is a really great path to production. What we found is that there's a ton of phenomenal production companies with huge talent who have these ideas that they're really excited about. Real industry-leading companies, industry-leading talent, with industry-leading ideas that really just don't have a home because there's only so many buyers who are deficit financing programming. There's a pretty limited amount of buyers who are looking to do that short-form programming and figuring out how it aligns within their specific slates and mandates. There's so many, so many slots available on those slates, and a lot of great ideas end up not coming to fruition. This is a wonderful business for us to start plucking those ideas and repositioning them for brand partnership. Uh, we've gotten, I mean, this year we've done over a dozen programs, and most of those came through big talent partnerships or big production company partnerships. These are ideas that you know maybe didn't sell to TV for a specific reason, maybe you know didn't sell as like an AOL original for a specific reason, and uh, but they're they're stories that deserve to be told and stories that we believe we could build audience around. So by teaming up and going out to market this way, we found that we've had tremendous success bringing a lot of these stories to fruition. So with that said, we should have 10 minutes left for uh, some questions. Yes. What is the breakdown of genres, like uh, drama versus lifestyle or factual or what would, uh, in branded entertainment or documentary? Can sure. Can you break it down for me? Absolutely. So it, it covers everything. That's one of the things I really creatively enjoy most about this space. Uh, I could tell you that before making the shift out of our originals group onto branded, I had the obvious reservations of like, but then like, are we making commercials? How does this work? And, and when I really stopped and stepped back and look at and looked at, well, what are the programs that were most fun to work on? It wasn't necessarily the big half hour formats or you know how long they take to get to market and all the folks that get involved and how, how challenging that could be. But in many cases, it was like those, those really smaller, really unique ideas that just felt special where there were no limitations around what the format or the genre should be. I'm tying it back to your question. So, uh, and really just over the last couple of years of focusing on this space, it, it's been very refreshing to see that there's, there's very few limitations around what we can do. What I will say is that serialized programming is very challenging to do. Overall, overwhelmingly so, uh, the, the, the brands are interested in creating storytelling where each episode is its own standalone story. Now that doesn't mean that you can't do scripted. Drama is a bit of a challenge in terms of, you know, it, it has to be more, um, more of an anthology uh, formatted out in that sense. Even if it's comedy, the scripted one that we did with Farmers, for example, was, uh, was sort of an anthology in that sense, where it was like one episode was about having a baby, one episode was about getting married, and all these big pivotal firsts. But... Um, yeah, comedy is totally in play. Drama is in play. Scripted drama is hard. We've had a really hard time selling through scripted drama, I think largely due to the serialized reason. Lifestyle programming across all aspects of lifestyle is overwhelmingly where the money is right now. Uh, that, that, that's where we're seeing the highest opportunity. And then getting into you know, news and information, there's certainly opportunities there, but they're a bit fewer. Yes. Quick question on how you incorporate advertising. I haven't seen too much, like you mentioned the brands, and you know there's some uh, programming online where they force you to watch the ads surrounding the brands prior to, so maybe you won't get the click through to watch. What do you find is most effective to incorporate the brands so they're satisfied, but also for online viewing, so they're not inundated with mandatory advertising? Sure. Uh, look, pre-roll is always going to be a deterrent. Uh, you're going to see drop-off during a pre-roll ad. That said, our branded shows have a pre-roll for the brand that purchased the show. 
in that like they're those are ads that they're buying. So, you know, while the show expresses at a high level, you know, a thematic integration, however you define that, and maybe there's a product integration as well, in almost all cases there is a pre-roll in advance of the episode as well for that brand simply because and look, the banner ads around the page are also branded for that they own 100% share of voice around that content. So, uh, there's it it's a barrier that we're trying to figure out in terms of audience retention because you know when it smells like an ad, it, 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 it audiences kind of you know kind of wince at that a little bit. Yes. Um, this is uh, this is really fascinating. I guess my question for you is how do we as um, as producers and creators connect with you and with Yahoo in order to to make content for you and be be entrusted to make content for the brands you work with. Well, that starts with us having a conversation, <laughs> getting a sense of uh, what what you've done, where your your key expertise is, um, what what your voice is, and what ideas you have that we might be able to take out. You know, the easiest way is that if we're able to sell something through, well, then great, you're producing it. And then um, if it's something that we've sold but we need to attach a production company to, which happens quite, quite frequently, that's a matter of us really trying to identify who's the best company to handle this type of story. So yeah, it just starts with the conversation. And I'm here <laughs> for all of you. Anyone else? Yes. Um, can you talk about what you think? Could you talk about what you think are some of the more successful uh, branded entertainment pieces in the space, either ones that you've worked on or others. I mean, off the top of my mind, I'm just think, I'm thinking back to the BMW campaign, the big one. I'm also thinking like the Ileana Douglas stuff in Ikea, mm -hmm. which I couldn't stomach. I'm just, I'm just <laughs> wondering what you thought was really effective and what you thought, um, the kind of work that you'd like to do. Absolutely. So uh, yeah, I love how you brought up those two examples, BMW films over here and um, the IKEA one, I forget the name of it over here, because they really do represent two ends of the spectrum, right? Uh, you have a lot in between. Um, I'll spare you going on and on about stuff we've done at Yahoo, because I've talked about that enough, so I'll focus on something that someone else has done. You know, one of my favorite things that I've seen in the last, was it like a year or two, was something that, this, it passed the first litmus test of it was shown to me as something that my wife wanted to show me because she thought I would like it. She, like, she didn't even know that it was branded entertainment. The only way that I knew that it was branded was from one very small shot in the episode. I was like, wait, that, like, my, my radar is attuned to that. And uh, so then I looked it up and I saw, so um, I guess it was about a year ago, BuzzFeed did something for Purina. And uh, it was a series of videos from the perspective of dogs and from cats. And if you're a pet owner, I mean, they just, they, they, they found a way to tap into that whole, like, Everyone freaking out about how awesome like great cat videos are on YouTube and all that. They found a way to tap into that nerve while also creating something that felt so unique. It had its own special voice. It felt so authentic. And it was the kind of thing that just from a sheer entertainment standpoint, I felt compelled to share with people. And when I figured out that Purina was involved, uh, I was just so impressed that both they and BuzzFeed were able to create that together. Yeah, it, I think it's really a great example of where I... Uh, where I, I aspire to see this industry move towards, and I'm seeing more and more signs that we're getting there, which is very fulfilling. 